Hey everybody, Brian Goulet here of GouletPens.com, and I'm very excited to be back here in my office shooting a video for the first time, uh, basically <laughs> in six months. The pen I wanna to feature today is actually the Montegrappa Elmo. I'm a little late to the game introducing this one to you because we've been carrying this pen for about two years, uh, but we've had a number of different colors and some interesting materials that have come out with this pen, and it's worth a more in-depth look. So we're gonna really dive in deep on this one. So if you like those kind of old school deep dive fountain pen reviews, uh, that's what this is gonna be. Now, this is a pen that uh, I think is a really, really great pen for anybody who has to actually write with their pens. The balance is fantastic. It feels really good in the hand. It's very simple. It's got a, it doesn't have a lot of complexity to it. Um, and so it's just a really enjoyable pen to actually use. It also presents really well. So if you wanted something that has some interesting color characteristics, it's it's a little classic in its design, but it's also um, you know kind of vibrant, kind of modern in its color scheme. So it makes for an interesting gift item if you did want to kind of present this to anyone as a little bit nicer pen. So Monta Grappa actually developed the Elmo as kind of the introductory pen into their lineup. They typically are dealing with very expensive, limited editions. They have artisans on staff who are doing hand painting, jewel setting, engraving. They're typically doing really, really nice kind of custom pens. They have a huge bespoke line. Uh, and that's that's a, actually a big part of what they do. Uh, so to have more of a, I'll call it a mass produced pen like this, is actually a bit of a deviation from what they normally do. I had the opportunity to visit their factory in Bassano del Grappa, Italy in late 2019. It's a beautiful facility. They've been operating there for over a hundred years. And I was able to spend some time with uh, Giuseppe Aquila, who is the CEO, and he's uh, the grandson of the founder of Montegrappa. And he's currently running things there, and he just really had a passion for developing this Elmo um, because most of the pens they have are really in that like kind of holy grail price range. And this is something that he wanted, kind of a minimalist design, something that's gonna last a really long time and be a really good, reliable writer that would be a nice introduction into the Montegrappa brand. One of the things I love about the Elmo is all the different colors that Montegrappa has has already introduced into this pen. Um, they've done a number that are regular editions, including the black, which is very, very minimalist, kind of plain. Uh, but then they've done a Fantasy Bloom series. So this includes the Black Star Calla Lily, Blue Cross Gentian, and Iris Yellow. These are very complex, very deep, very saturated colors, and they look absolutely fantastic. Definitely stand out from most of your normal pens. They also have developed something that's a new material and they call it Montegrappite. So they kind of named it after their own company a little bit. Um, this is a material that they developed in-house. So this is a resin that's actually extruded. So it's not injection mold. It's not a cast resin necessarily. So it's a little bit different process that they kind of develop themselves. It's a little secret, a little kind of a Willy Wonka thing going on in their factory. But um, what they can do is they can take basically any colors that they want and they kind of put it into ribbons and they extrude it out just like you would um, a similar process to, to how uh, ebonite is extruded. And then it's turned uh, from a single rod of this extruded material. Uh, and so it gets some very interesting patterns, very unique colors, and they can basically customize it and do whatever they want. And what's really cool about this material specifically is that it has a clear base and then they add color to it. So what happens is you don't end up with uh, kind of a translucent color. You end up with a, a variation of clear and color. So you can actually see more depth and more interesting uh, texture to the material itself than you normally would with say a cast acrylic resin. It's quite fascinating and really difficult to see unless you get to see it close up like you are in this video. The one thing about the Montegrappite, and this can either be a benefit or a drawback depending on how you look at it, um, each pen ends up looking really unique. So I like to think of it as you're getting something that looks like a pen that no one else has. It's gonna be unique to you. That said, the challenge with that is when you're shopping online, like on our website, you're only gonna see one picture of the pen. Now we try to photograph couple because what happens is when they extrude these materials, the color variation, the pattern of the swirls can end up looking pretty different from pen to pen. We try to communicate this and accommodate as much as we can, but it is really difficult to get like very specific requests. So you do have to have a little understanding that it could look a little different than what's photographed when you end up buying a pen in this material. In the Montegrappa collection, we have 
three different colors that have been available, and this is uh, all exclusives that we've done at Goulet Pens. We have See at Dusk, Wave Splash, and Chrysocola. So one of the things I love the most about this pen is the way that it actually feels in the hand, the way that it writes. Uh, when I'm holding this pen, you know, looking at the grip, it contours nicely to my fingers. It's a really comfortable pen to hold. The resin material, it really gives a solid grasp. It feels kind of warm to the touch, um, as opposed to a pen that maybe would have a metal grip. The threads, they originally started out being made of resin in the earlier versions of the pens. Um, but these days, all the ones that are available, um, they now have metal threads. Uh, they wanted to increase the durability and longevity, so that's why they decided to make that change. Uh, the threads are kind of far back from the grip, so they don't really get in the way. My hand's not really on it. My thumb maybe just a little bit, but it's not uncomfortable because the threads are fat. They're very squared off and kind of rounded, so there's no sharpness to the threads at all. Um, so they're really not bothersome. And I uh, dare to say the threads actually even feel good. I know that sounds weird to say, but um, it is kind of special on this pen. There's a noticeable step as is the case for any pen that's designed for the cap to fit flush to the pen body. Uh, but I feel like it's far back enough where it's not really gonna be touched by most people when holding the pen in your writing position. Overall feel of the pen in the hand is just quite simply magnifico. Given that there's a lot of resin in the pen and not a whole lot of trim, uh, normally this would be a pretty light pen. But what they've actually done, they were thoughtful about this, and they uh, inserted a brass barrel into the pen that serves no other purpose other than to add and distribute weight. Uh, and I think it is a really good addition um, because it makes it feel uh, a little more solid in my hand. And now that's just me. I like pens that maybe are a little heavier. This pen is pushing 29 grams. Uh, which overall um, is a pretty comfortable weight. I find anything in the 20 to 30 gram range is a pretty good weight for most people from most fountain pens. It feels pretty substantial. It makes you feel like you're really holding something when you write, but it's not so heavy that your hand gets really tired if you write with it for a long time. So I like the, I like the thoughtfulness they had on that. Of course, by doing that, they're going to have most of the weight in the grip of the pen. You're going to be closer to like 24 grams, just in the body of the weight of the pen. And what I like about that is you get a really even dispersion. Even if you're posting the cap, there's not a lot of weight in the cap. So you, whether you post it or unpost it, the pen feels very balanced in the hand. It's not really a front weighted pen. I feel like if they didn't have that brass in there, that it would uh, be a bit front weighted because you have some of the metal with the nib and the threads, uh, but it feels really good. It kind of seats evenly between my fingers and the, the crook of my thumb and index finger here. Um, so in my opinion, the balance is really sublime. So the nib options, these are going to be stainless steel German-made Yovo nibs. Um, so Yovo is a company in Germany that makes nibs for a lot of different people. In fact, they make our Goulet branded nibs. Um, so Montegrappa is using their number six size nib for the Elmo. It's a great performing nib, using a lot of different pens. Uh, the difference with Montegrappa, though, is, of course, theirs is branded, so they have their logo uh, kind of, you know, all over uh, the front of this nib, which looks really nice. But another little touch that they do is they actually plate the nib in rhodium. Now, normally you only see rhodium plated nibs on yellow gold nibs because when you plate it in rhodium, it makes it look silver. Well, with stainless steel is already silver colored, so why in the world would they plate it in rhodium? It seems like an extra step. Well, we were able to ask the CEO about this, and he said that it just made the color a little bit more brilliant. It makes it a little more durable because rhodium, it's a harder metal. It's more of a precious metal than stainless steel. And so you're able to um, have a little bit more scratch resistant, a little more durability than you would if it was just stainless steel. Now let's take a look at the cap. Okay, so this is a threaded cap with an incredibly smooth movement. That's actually one of my favorite things about this pen. I just love the way that this feels when you're capping it. Um, it posts very securely. The taper of the body of the pen is very well suited for posting. It's clear that this was something that they were thinking about when they designed the pen. And because of the lightweight of the cap, it feels very balanced when you're posting it. The clip is really well designed. I really actually love the clip of this pen. It looks really slick. It contours nicely, just kind of complements and balances with the shape of the cap of the pen. Um, it's got a good spring tension to it. It's just firm enough, but not so firm that it's really hard to use. And it's got this wheel clip, uh, this wheel, you know, on the end of it, so that as you're moving it uh, over top of whatever clothing or, or pen case or whatever it is that you're clipping it in and out, um, that wheel really helps to assist in giving a smooth movement as you're moving the pen in and out. 
Uh, and one really cool thing, when I was actually at their factory, I saw a machine that they have specifically that all it does is pull the clip over and over again. They said they test it 10,000 times just to make sure the clip strength is strong enough. And they do that for every single model of pen that they design just to make sure that it's gonna last. So when you're inking up this pen, you got a couple different options. It is a cartridge converter pen, and it's the standard international cartridge converter. So it's gonna give you the most options in terms of what ink you can use in this pen. So if you like cartridges, it takes both short and long standard internationals, um, and you can use those with any brand that makes them in that size. Uh, it also includes a piston style converter. So if you wanna use bottled ink, that's what you're gonna to wanna to do. I don't recommend removing the filling mechanism and filling the body of the pen with ink. That's what's known as an eyedropper conversion. Uh, because it's got that brass tube in there that adds the weight, that brass can actually corrode in the ink if it's exposed to it for a long period of time. And then it can break down and cause some flow issues in the pen. So for that reason, I would not eyedropper convert it. If you want to clean it out really quickly, using a bulb syringe is just the best hack uh, I've ever discovered for fountain pens. And the fact that you can do that with this pen to me is fantastic. Makes it a really great candidate for if you like to test inks and change your inks a lot, that fast flushing method is really supreme. Now let's talk about how this pen writes because that's what I've been building up this whole time, right? Um, so getting into the springiness of the nib, you know it's a stainless steel nib, so it's not gonna be super soft, it's gonna be fairly rigid. So if you really are looking for a soft nib, you're gonna want something basically that's a gold nib. That's part of the benefit that they have. Not every gold nib does it, but you know you can pretty much assume most stainless steel nibs are going to be stiff, and this one is no exception. You know that said, you're not going to get a lot of like a natural line variation with this uh, nib. You can get a little bit if you're really pressing on it. It's not. I mean, it, it can be done, but that's not really how I would uh, you know, say that you should write with it normally. That said, the nib is really smooth. Um, it's got a little tiny bit of feedback to it, but uh, it seems that what Montegrappa is doing is, is really tuning this thing well. The flow is extremely consistent. It feels really, really good. The fact that it's a German-made nib, it's not gonna be as fine as maybe some of the Japanese nibs that are out there. So if you're, if you're writing on really uh, absorbent paper, you're gonna wanna go with an extra fine or a fine nib and kind of stick to those. If you go with the broader ones, they're gonna be a little bit wet and you might get some you know, overabsorption in, in some of your uh, more absorbent papers. But if you have paper that's pretty ink resistant, you know, go nuts. You can get the broader ones. Um, part of what I like about the wet ink flow that this pen has is that you can use uh, ink colors that have a lot of shading, that have a lot of color variation to them, some good sheen, maybe even some shimmer. Uh, and you can you put down a decent amount of ink, especially in like that broad nib, and uh, you can really see that ink shine part of what I really like about this pen. And then if you want some of that line variation, they do offer a 1.1 millimeter stub. That's the one I would go with if you want kind of that calligraphic kind of look. Uh, the tip of the nib is pretty round, so it's, it's rather forgiving. You know, that is one thing about fountain pens. Every company grinds their nibs just a little bit different, but um, this one is pretty round at the tip. And the reason that that matters is because um, it's very forgiving. Depending on the angle that you hold the pen while you write, it'll accommodate that for, for most uh, everybody's hand. And then it can also be pretty forgiving uh, for the rotation of the pen as you have it in your hand too. So that just makes it a very accommodating pen. Given the attention that they have to how this pen actually writes, it's clear that they were thoughtful, not just about the design and the aesthetics of it, but they really wanted a pen that writes fantastic too. It's kind of got the whole package. All right, so now let's talk about the price. You know, being realistic, it's a really nice pen. The fit and finish is fantastic. It uses some little more premium materials. Uh, you're going to be looking at an MSRP of closer to $250, a little bit higher on some of the limited editions. You know, you'll get a street price of closer to $200, uh, but that's really in a premium range for a steel nib fountain pen. Um, you're going to get that because you're, you're working with a really established company that does some really high-end products, um, and you're going to get really good, really consistent quality and a lot of the thoughtfulness and detail of it. So that said, it's not really going to be for everybody, and I fully understand that. Um, but if you are in the market for a pen kind of in this price range, I definitely think it's worth consideration. Even though you can get some starter fountain pens that have gold nibs, um, I think that if you aren't requiring the, you know, kind of softness or don't prefer the softness that you might get in certain gold nibs, I think you're getting some bang for the buck on this pen and some of the other aspects of it uh, that make it worth consideration, even pitting up against some of those starter gold nib pens. So if you're looking for a simple yet vibrant design, 
for a very established pen company that's a really comfortable daily writer, I definitely think it's worth taking a look at the Montegrappa Elmo. So for more details and up-to-date specs on the Montegrappa Elmo, you can check it out on GouletPens.com. We have lots of pictures and technical information there, and you can see some of the latest colors and models that they may have come out with after this video has already been posted. So be sure to check on that. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook and Instagram if you wanna see some of the great content we're putting out. We're gonna be doing tons of pen videos like this in the future and we want you to see them all. I would love to hear what you think about the Elmo specifically, so be sure to leave comments so I can see what you think. Thanks so much for watching and right on.